The Big 12 is highly revered as the best conference in college basketball. And with new head coaches coming in this offseason, <laughs> I think it somehow got better. Uh, this is Locked On Big 12 and Locked On College Basketball. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy hoops, everybody. Welcome into Locked On College Basketball, Locked On Big 12, a little crossover edition. I'm Drake Toll from America's number one Big 12 podcast, Locked On Big 12. And that's Isaac Shade from my favorite college basketball podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Today, let's talk BYU hoops, landing Kevin Young, Darian DeVries at West Virginia, Steve Lutz to Oklahoma State, and how the Big 12 got so much better at hoops. But first, it is BYU doing something that was unexpected for pretty much everybody. Isaac, we'll find out whether or not you saw this coming, but I was the people were like, hey, maybe there's a cool high school coach in Utah they could land in Provo next year. And instead, they got the best assistant coach in the whole NBA, a guy who could have been the Brooklyn Nets head coach in Kevin Young. Isaac, react. Ah, that's my yeah. reaction. Um, yeah. well, legitimately, like Drake, it, it's funny when we were first hearing about Mark Pope heading to Kentucky, my first place I went was Mark Madsen because we know it's got to be an LDS coach at BYU. Right. And that's the only person that I could think of off the top of my head. And then he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm a, I'm a stay in the, uh, you know, out on the West coast here now. And this is like, all right. So I don't, I don't know where BYU goes now. And then, no, I did not see this coming. Complete shocker, because as you said, I'm expecting Kevin Young, the best paid assistant in the NBA, to go take one of these jobs where he's been the fine book or a candidate for multiple NBA jobs. But here we are, a splash, a great move for BYU as they're saying, hey, look, year two in the Big 12, Mark Pope did a great job for us in year one. We're going to try to step it up even more. I love this hire, Drake. That university, BYU, has been so good at doing more with less. Typically, when they hire a coach for a major sport or a minor sport, you have never heard of them. If you live outside of the Salt Lake City area, it's usually a guy who is steeped in BYU culture or is a member of the LDS church, and most of the time, both, who flies under the radar, and then you find out, oh, he can actually do it and do it at BYU because they fit the culture. And now you have a guy that I think can do both. Not only does he fit the culture, but he's also one at the highest level. It's blowing my mind a bit, Isaac, that he could call up Kevin Durant or Chris Paul tomorrow and, you know, hey, guys, could you help me out these, with these recruits? But I, I want to default back to the LDS membership and how that is so crucial here. BYU's got a different culture, a different set of ethics, different set of morals. He's not going in the portal to get that random guy from Georgetown. He's now targeting guys who are coming back from mission. That's a tough thing to do, but Young is set up to do it. That's right. And as you said, you know, typically they're doing more with less right now. They're doing more with more Drake, if we can put it that way. Um, But what's interesting about that is usually like I I was reading back on some of the hiring practices because I remembered that it is a bit wacky. Complex. Yeah. Yeah. For BYU where they've got a vet, I say wacky, just unique, I think is probably a better word I should use, um, where at least three candidates to be formally interviewed for the position. He was the only one they went after. I mean, that, that was the guy. Um, and obviously, as you said, they've got to be practicing Mormon faith, part of the church of Latter-day Saints. He's all that he checks all the boxes. And so you look at Kevin Young and you like it because as you said, he's got this pedigree And so he's got to go to the portal and get guys or have these older um, guys coming back from mission. Right. And I think the thing is, is you look at this and if you're a player, you say, hang on a second here. This guy is coming down from the NBA, although making more money now, despite being the highest paid assistant in the NBA. But he's been everywhere in the NBA. He's been at the highest level. He was a head coach for four days uh, during the COVID era. And like, there's all this stuff. Let me go play for him because he knows what he needs to do to get me up there where he's just coming from. I think like this is no, it's so great. It's awesome. And it's not an Eric Musselman where if you're a college basketball player, you think, like, oh, this guy came from the NBA ranks, has the connections, but will he be at my school in three years? There are some of those that are not tenured guys. 
at BYU, unless your name is Mark Pope, you pretty much stick <laughs> around for a long time. Isaac, maybe the one question that's most burning, though, from the cynical standpoint, or at least objective standpoint, is can he command NIL and the transfer portal? The last time he was coaching the college game, those were two things that weren't near as prevalent as they are now. How do you how do you mix a guy who's coming from the NBA into the new culture of college athletics? What's funny is, Drake, so often we in the college uh, athletics realm think, oh, man, I would much rather go to the NBA um, because it's like I don't have to do all this recruiting. I don't have to do this and this and that. This is the flip. Coaches come out and said, I, I'm excited to go down here because it kind of takes some pressure off my family and all these things I'm doing. And so um, I think he's excited about that side of it um, in terms of like, can this be a long term thing? Yeah, that's part of the deal is like the, the numbers weren't disclosed to ESPN. Um, but from Matt Norlander from CBS's reporting, it's looking like it's going to be about a seven year, 30 million dollar deal. Not only that, he's got two very high profile kind of people on his side, two powerful connections. One is Danny Ainge, whom he has a longstanding friendship with, who was obviously a BYU alum, whereas coach is not. That's something to keep in mind. He graduated from Clayton State, which is in the Atlanta suburbs. Like literally that campus is 10 minutes from where I grew up on the south side of Atlanta, which is kind of wild. Um, but then I think perhaps even more critically than Danny Ainge is the fact that we've got billionaire BYU alum Ryan Smith, who was a power player in this hiring process, Drake, yeah. that not only is part of, of bringing in coach young, but also is going to be able to foot the bill to help this NIL process a lot. And I think that should not be overlooked in any way. I want to, you know, Isaac, I'll speak for both of us here because you and I have talked off the air about ethics and morals commitments, even to to a faith. For, for BYU, none of what we said is to knock that commitment to faith. But honestly, to me, and, and again, I, I think I have to speak for both of us in saying there's a different level of respect for a university that sticks to its guns when it comes to their faith. They do not waver from a commitment in that category, and BYU is up there with the best of them. And in this hire... The, the university itself coming to the Big 12, we in the conference thought, oh, that's the school that's so committed to faith. Can they actually compete with the big boys who can do it wide open, no rules? And to me, this hire shows that BYU is going to continue to compete at the top of the Big 12. The Big 12 conference without Mark Pope just got better. It, it, it 100% did. And to the point, Drake, that you just made, I love that BYU introduced coach young to the student body, basically like at their weekly chapel service, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't like that, that in itself shows what you're just talking about there. Um, but as a man of faith myself, I'm, I'm not part of the Mormon faith or the LDS church, but I am a Christian. And so I I'm in on this dude. I love it. And I think that they certainly can do this. They've shown it in the move from the West coast conference now to the big 12 this year, where they had the same conference record as Kansas last year, where they, you know, like j did all these things that you hoped you could do with Mark Pope, who's now off to Kentucky. You bring in coach young. And I feel strongly that they can compete despite any, you know, concern you have about personnel or whom you bring in because he's a coach that knows how to be able to get it done. And he will. Coming up, Darian DeVries in West Virginia. This was going to be the scariest hire in conference until Kevin Young stepped in, but it's still a darn good one here on Locked On Big 12 and Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person, and maybe I am. We all have that competitive side, and Monopoly Go helps me tap into that with my friends. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. A great twist on Monopoly where you can play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up cities and making big money. Best part is it's messing with friends. I can charge them rent. I can take their money. I can steal from them, and we can see who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. It's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and even play together if you're a loving person. Get in a game and join with your friends. Download Monopoly Go for free on the App Store or Google Play. That is Monopoly Go. Download it on Google Play or the App Store today. Isaac, West Virginia is 
an athletic program that's been troubled by stuff the fans can't control for the last few years. It just it has been a tough fan base to be a part of outside looking in. And now Darian Devries being hired as the head coach to, in essence, replace Bob Huggins in what was a dumpster fire of an exit, to me is a huge step in not just the right direction, but a winning direction for a guy who was perennially at the NCAA tournament at Creighton as an assistant for 18 years and then took Drake to unforeseen heights going 150 and 55 in his tenure there. And it, it just is one of these guys that wins. And now he's in Morgantown, a place that knows hoops. Drake, it was, I mean, we're right about a time of the, uh, the one year anniversary of the Bob Huggins stuff, just going wild. Yeah. And um, like, who would have thought, right. Like <laughs> that we would have gotten there. Now the truth is, I think everyone's aware of this, but Josh Eilert was never intended to be the long-term plan for West Virginia. He was always yeah. a lame duck interim coach, essentially. And, and the plan all along was we're going to go get our guy. But it, it really felt like the plan was to try to go maybe poach another high major coach. I'm a poet and didn't know it. Um, but Drake, I truly think... Yes. That, yes, right? What's up? I really do love this hire for a multitude of reasons. Um, I love going out and getting a successful mid-major coach over just bringing in an alum like a lot of schools are doing that doesn't have much co coaching experience, if any, at all. And so I, I think West Virginia's commitment to getting a basketball coach is key. I love, as you were just saying, you know, the only two schools you mentioned were Creighton and West Virginia or excuse me, Creighton and Drake. You know yeah. why Drake? Because those are the only two schools he's ever coached at right. all those years of consistent longevity and commitment to those schools. 01 to 2018 at Creighton as an assistant, both under Dana Altman and, um, you know, and, and now I'm uh, McDermott. Under McDermott. McDermott. Thank you. I, his name came to me at the same time. Um, and then the past six years at Drake, that's yeah. it. Those are his coaching stops. And as you said, his tenure at Drake has been, phenomenal made the NCAA tournament three of those six years even one of those as an at large you didn't even have to win the Missouri Valley one of those years Drake great pedigree and I love what he's bringing to West Virginia most critically what I love that he's bringing to West Virginia is his son Tucker huge in the recruiting uh, on the recruiting side and NIL side the fact that he brought his son in and it was just like at the press conference like ah, you know like, we're not hiding anything here we know exactly what's going to happen this kid's going to West Virginia um Isaac when it comes to like, if I'm a Texas tech fan listening to this, you know, I, I, maybe I check out, like, I don't care about the new West Virginia basketball coach. Why would other big 12 fan bases? And maybe this goes back to, does this make the conference better? Should you care? Should you be scared about a name that you probably haven't heard of? I, I think there's two different things there. Drake, you said, why should I care? And why should I be scared? Mm. I should mm. care because this is another great coach. In my conference, you you said Texas Tech. What's funny about that is that's the only other Big 12 school that brought in a new coach last year. Grant McCasland coming yeah. from North Texas. What a phenomenal hire for Texas Tech. So if you're a Red Raiders fan in Lubbock, I know that was just a random example you used, but it actually is a perfect example, Drake. Yeah, because Texas Tech just did exactly what West Virginia has done. And we saw how well that worked out for Texas Tech this year, despite major injuries down the stretch, all sorts of stuff, because Grant McCaslin is a heck of a basketball coach and the exact same is true uh, of Darren DeVries. And so that's why Texas Tech should care. But that's also why Texas Tech should be scared, because this is another high level coach in the Big 12. Do you see something with DeVries? And, and again, this goes back to something we asked about the BYU coaching search. There's always that cynical side. The question you ask of can he do X? Why isn't he X? And for me, it's is this just another coach who came from a Stetson or a Northern Illinois or an Eastern Iowa that has won at a smaller rank, gets into the big leagues, spends four or five years coaching at West Virginia and bounces out, doesn't make it. I mean, what's the little knack that makes him different from somebody else who succeeded at a mid-major level and gets a high major job? It's because there's some longevity to it. Good. Drake, for me, like a lot of those coaches that you see, they did it one year and become a sexy tournament darling. And then let's go pluck them mm -hmm. yep. with DeVries. I know it's just been six years at, at, at Drake, but that is a lot more than we see from a lot of those kind of guys. And then the pedigree that's been poured into him 
in those, you know, almost two decades worth of assistant coaching at Creighton from a Dana Altman and a Greg McDermott, man, that, that pedigree is great. And then clearly he's been able to do it on his own as well. Right. And, and that's what we've seen. So in his six years at Drake, for example, only one of those six years, has he been outside the top two in the regular season standings? That that consistent success tells me that that Darren's got everything he needs to survive in Morgantown. What's interesting to me is the strength of names in this conference. Johnny Dawkins might be the worst basketball coach in the Big 12, and he's a guy who's had as much success as really anybody at UCF, and, and a guy like Wes Miller, who's got pedigree was at the bottom of the league this last year and still almost made the NCAA tournament. Isaac, does this push some of those guys back down the list? I mean, if you are sitting in a chair where, man, we missed March and in the big 12, that's a big no, no. Do you feel even more pressure when a hire like this comes in? You have to. And, and so much of that Drake is the, the glut, the, the growing blob of all these major conferences where as we get up to 16 teams now for next season, and and I know we lose Oklahoma and I know we lose Texas, but you're bringing in also Tommy Lloyd and you're bringing in not the Hurley, but a Hurley. (laughs) Um, And and so there, like you said, this conference is chock-a-block full of names. And I think there's going to be, you know, you're always going to have Bill Self at the top. And then a conglomerate around, you're always going to have Kelvin Sampson right up there at the top with him. And I think some of these names that we're talking about are going to float around from the middle to the bottom of the pack in a given year. Mm. And and sometimes it's not even going to be about their coaching. Sometimes it's going to be what did or didn't happen in the transfer portal, who they were or weren't able to get because of NIL dollars at their own school and elsewhere. And that, frankly, is part of the, the landscape of our of our college athletics world now is that it's not always going to be about the ability of the coach yeah. is sometimes it's just going to be, frankly, about roster makeup and what you can and can't get. A la Jerome Tang missing the NCAA tournament after an Elite Eight appearance. It's a, it's a perfect point you make there, Isaac. Talking about guys Here, that have... Look, we're in, in another world, Drake, right now. We're talking about Jerome Tang at Baylor if Scott Drew had left for Kentucky. And yeah. like, right, because he's a phenomenal basketball coach. So, yeah. it's, like it doesn't... You're going to have these one-offs. It's going to happen. And, and Baylor fans would have been over the moon to hire a guy that missed the NCAA tournament last year. They would have been over the moon. And, you know, Kansas State fans, I think what the, the dumpster fire the administration was this season probably would have understood. Going into the guys you talk about, though, that have bounced around or been in a couple of mid-majors for a year stint. Steve Lutz is one of those, but I don't know if he fits in that category. Let's see if you agree here on Locked On Big 12 and Locked On College Basketball. A little crossover edition talking Big 12 hoops. Today's show is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. I have been, look, I'm 23 years old. I need someone to help me with my finances because I have no idea what I'm doing. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all your investment and retirement accounts right now in one place? Yahoo Finance, you can't. So I have an investment account with Schwab, a 401k with Fidelity. I know, 23 and doing that's pretty awesome, right? At Yahoo Finance, I can consolidate all of those and see them in one place. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand. It's been the most loyal to all of its users. And Yahoo Finance, to me, the best part, Easy to use. Every great investor behind every great investor is Yahoo Finance. Securely link your link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including a 401k and other investments. Comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors. It's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at where your wealth is. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That is yahoofinance.com. Steve Lutz, Oklahoma State. When we talk about BYU going with the best assistant coach in the NBA, we talk about West Virginia going with Darian DeVries, who's been at two schools the last 24 years. Now, Steve Lutz comes into Oklahoma State, who's been at two schools the last three years. But my goodness, Isaac, he has made the NCAA tournament all three of those years. It's a guy who is, he just, how do you categorize it? How do you fit this into a mold but otherwise, other than say he just goes to the NCAA tournament, it's insane. 
Yeah, I mean, clearly Steve Lutz is a winner. Now, what's interesting yeah. is he's kind of a flip of what we talked about with Darren DeVries because he's been all over the place. Incarnate Word, a community college, Stephen F. Austin, yeah. SMU, Creighton, Purdue. And then now, finally, finally, that's 1995 all the way through 2021 as an assistant, Drake. And so it's not like he's a, a young whippersnapper. This is a dude who has put in his years as a coach doing all the grunt work. And then when he finally gets his shot at Texas A&M Corpus Christi three seasons ago, Southland Conference, man. I mean, like, what are we doing here? But he takes this school like here's everything that I need to know, Drake. The year before he gets to Texas A&M Corpus Christi, Steve Lutz, they were five and 19. Now, granted, that's the year after COVID. But even in the years before that, 14 and 18, the year before that, 14 and 18, his two years at the helm in Corpus Christi, 23 and 12 and 24 and 11. Yeah, that that is all you need to know, because I know sometimes there is the like the luck of winning your conference tournament. And so there is something of a small sample size statistical anomaly to winning three straight conference tournaments to do it. But he's been doing it in the regular season. It's not like they're an eight seed that came out of nowhere to win. Drake, and that tells me everything last year, Western Kentucky, 22 and 12 made the NCAA tournament, turned around a team turned around less so than A&M Corpus Christi, but they were 17 and 16 the year yep. before he got there. So this is a dude that clearly is able to come in and utilize whatever guys he has, because let's, let's be honest also at this level in conference USA with Western Kentucky in the Southland conference with uh, A&M Corpus Christi. It's not like we've got all this transfer portal stuff coming in all the time. This yeah. is just, what do I got? Let's make it work. And clearly he's been able to do that. I think again, Eric Musselman's the great example of the guy who's bounced around. Um, and, and that there just is no comparison to a guy like Lutz who worked his way to where he is. He had to go and lose as an assistant at these universities to somehow find his way to being a head coach. And now is trying to put himself in the best position to get to an Oklahoma state, whereas a Musselman's going from NBA team to high level college team back to the NBA. That, that's a balance chasing something else. This guy has chased a job like Oklahoma state. Can you trust that Lutz will put more than one or two years of work into Stillwater, or is that kind of a crapshoot? I, I, no, I think he's there for a good while, unless it just falls flat on its belly. Yeah. Uh, I've never used that phrase before. Don't know where it Hello. came from, but but I'm into it. You know, um, whatever's normal, do the opposite. Great, I like it. <laughs> That's great. But but with Lutz, this is a guy that has been working for this opportunity. I th let me yep. put it in these terms. I'm a big Braves fan, and okay. I, Brian Snitker is the Braves manager. He has been part of the Braves organization at the minor league level for literally four decades, forty years lifer a grunt work kind of guy and then now that he's had this opportunity to be the manager of the big club he's taken every advantage of it and the braves are rolling the, yeah. now i know for steve lutz it's not been in the same program where he's worked his way up this whole time but it's been stop after stop just getting here and he's not going to throw away this opportunity now that he's here oklahoma state let's remember is a very very proud basketball program, two national yeah. titles, Hall of Fame coaches in Henry Iba and Eddie Sutton, six final fours, right? And I know there's none since, what, 04, I think is the last final four. For them. But, but this is a program where you come and it's not creating something that's never been. This is a place where you come and restore it to what it once was. And so that is what Steve Lutz's, Steve Lutz's uh, task is. And I see him sticking it out to make that happen. He's built a really good coaching staff, too, and I know he'll attack the transfer portal that's gone haywire so far. Uh, again, Isaac, I'm going to ask you kind of the same question that we've gotten with every new hire in the league. How does it make the conference better? DeVries and Young seem to be the two guys, BYU and West Virginia, that are a, a bit above Lutz from a resume standpoint. Is Steve Lutz, does he have the pedigree to be a top 10 coach in a very deep 16 team league or, or does it matter to be a top 10 coach as long as you're just making the NCAA tournament and putting your team in a good position? Yeah, and I think that's the thing is it's now a year to year thing that you got to look at, right? Yeah. Every year. Can I create something? I know it wasn't great this year for Oklahoma State, and that's even putting it kindly, I guess, yeah. if we're being honest yeah. straight. Um, but yes, he's got the capability. A guy who's come into 
not great situations, which this is. I mean, he's four of his top six scores from or not his, but Oklahoma State's top yep. six scores from last year are transferring out. The other two that aren't those guys that are transferring out is Bryce Thompson, who got hurt and only played 18 games. And uh, another player I can't even think of right now who's out of eligibility. Exactly. So, great point. <laughs> uh, right. So, like, the, but in a way, kind of in the way that John Calipari right now is sitting in Fayetteville, Arkansas, smiling because he's got a complete blank slate to work with. Correct. You, you get to do it your own way. And there's something nice about that. Um, now of course, like, you know, his hiring was announced on April fool's day. And so it's like, great. What a day to start, but but let's make it happen. Who can I get in? Who are my guys? What are we going to do? Let's make this ours. Let's put our DNA and our fingerprints all over this Oklahoma state program and return it to the glory that it should have. Three huge hires in the Big 12 Conference, making a very deep basketball conference, especially with the addition of Arizona, even Colorado coming in, making a very deep basketball conference even deeper somehow. And that's 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 extreme. Oh, hit me with it. Come on, Laud. Just what I'm going to say is, you know, you're asking about these coaches. There are going to be phenomenal basketball coaches that finish 14th in the Big 12 every year. That's what we're looking at in this conference. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, I, th- I think that was, I just wanted, you know, to hear you praise the big 12 is always a great thing. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mind it at all. Um, yeah. I, 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 you know, a bill self will never be there, but there will right. be years that I think Wes Miller is a really good basketball coach and was at the bottom of the big 12 this year, because that's just the way the conference goes. It eats you up. It spits you back out. That's Isaac shade of locked on college basketball. Frank toll of locked on big 12. Thanks for making these shows your first lesson every single day. This has been a crossover edition of locked on college basketball and locked on. Thanks for making it again. Your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.